So one egg gets to comfortably live inside this really cute little bowl. And then the other one is placed beside it. What is the point? Anyway. Hello! Today we are going to make a cinnamon roll cake. My name is Anita Dare. This is the Overdressed Cook for Once. I've remembered to introduce the show and not waited until halfway through the show to tell you what's happening. I tried my very first cinnamon roll um, from Java and I was like, what is this thing that looks very interesting with a thing in the middle? And it was a cinnamon roll and after I ate it, I was obsessed. Um, so yeah, so there was this guy I had a really, really massive crush on and he just randomly mentioned one time, He's just like, oh, I think I had the best cinnamon roll yesterday. Do you know how I slaved in the kitchen for a whole month trying to ensure that my recipe was better than whoever the hell made those cinnamon rolls? To be fair, he only ate one, so I'm not really sure whether he liked them or he was just eating it out of being polite, but I know I did a good job. So we've already pre-mixed everything. In short, you should be scared. Who normally does pre-mixing? Pfizer. How well has it worked out with us so far with Pfizer? Not so great. In here, there's flour, there's baking powder. There's baking, you have to remember to have baking powder, please. I know salt normally helps in, um, in the, in, it's like a raising agent, a rising agent, but also it just, I've never really understood the purpose of salt, come to think about it, but I was once told something in those lines. So I'm going to assume that's it. And I'm not doing this because I just like, I want to show you guys this spatula. It's really hot in this kitchen. Okay. All of our dry ingredients are mixed together. That is them. And then we have our wet ingredients, which involves milk, butter, sugar. We're going to add a bit of vanilla essence to that as well. And yeah, we're using caster sugar because I find it easier to just um, blend into meals whenever I am making anything that is baked as opposed to normal sugar. So that's that. And then we can add the butter, actually, before we add the milk. So it's melted butter, unsalted. And there's somebody who, comp who keeps complaining in my comment section every single week. You, your hair is always all over the place in the kitchen. Okay, but I'm not assuming that's how the person sounds, but I'm just saying it's become like a normal complaint now. So I'm just like, I carried pins today. And then we add the milk. So this particular recipe requires three different steps. There's the step where there's the cake. There's the step where there's the cinnamon topping. And then there's now the step that has the cream cheese at the top. I love me cream cheese. I am a very big fan of washing dishes. I find it very therapeutic. Like I'll go to my friend's houses and I'll just start washing dishes. Like sometimes I think, you know the way you can walk into a house, there's a house party going on. And then you just walk in and you're like, hi guys, how are you? And then you just go, you're like, do you have a t-shirt I can wear over this dress? Thanks. And then I just go to the kitchen. I think some people whose homes I've been to, their guests thought I work for them. Do you know the first time I went to baking school, we were not allowed to use mixers? When I was 13 years old, I grew up in Eldoret, so there was very little to do, to be very honest. When I was 13, uh, my the, um, there's a place called Farm Machinery, and across from it, there was a place where they used to teach people how to bake. And they teach you how to bake from the basics of, ba like, um, you see how I was saying I use the blender to make granulated sugar? You use a rolling pin to roll that sugar until it becomes powdery. I'm not even joking, guys. You will wait for your... Um, your butter to get to room temperature and you will beat this whole mixture with a hand mixer until it's actually all smooth and then um so so day one of course when i checked in there equipment i i look like <laughs> i look like i was coming to shoot a music video i came with so many things from the mixers to i don't know the what the what the what and then i arrived there and then i was asked by one of the ladies what is all this and i was like oh okay so this is my mixer um this is my my measuring scale thing this is my she's like yeah that's so nice and i'm so happy for you now put them all in that corner wear your apron now let me show you what we're going to do i i guys let's just say i thank the lord that we're back to using mixers is this thing on one sec so you start off slow obviously because you don't want your batter going everywhere it's supposed to be thick but is it meant to be this thick i ain't sure i think that i feel like that's way too thick yep we definitely need more milk it is so thick and rubbery as, have you, as has anyone ever described butter as rubbery i don't know but that's how it feels it's meant to be thick but not that thick i usually have a deeper um mixing bowl but i forgot it at home and this one is slightly so the oven is already preheated should we make it thinner the thing is it's supposed to be thick to the extent where you can sort of swirl it around without it being watery and you don't want the cinnamon mixture to sink to the bottom of the said mixture so i think i'm going to leave it at that like i said 
I always do these experiments for the first time for you guys to see. Please name one time I have done this show the right way. So after I've done all that, all that, you guys, I forgot to put the vanilla essence. Wow. You know what we're going to do? We're just going to like splash some on top. Anyway, so I was telling you, so I go for this thing and when I went home that day, I even asked my dad, I was like, did I cosay you? What the hell is going on? I was like, that, that, that is boot camp for, for baking. If you wanted me to be inspired into wanting to love baking, that is not going to make me get inspired at all. Up until the next day when I went there, I was told, how, how is it that everything that you baked, you didn't go home with? I was like, hold on, the rules have just changed. I'm sorry, what now? They're like, no, everything that you make, you go home with. Do you really think... When I told my father that story, he was going to let me ever quit going for baking school. He was like, now you're going to be going every day. There's, I'm no, I no longer have to buy bread. I paid for you to go learn something and now there'll be bread in the house every day, cupcakes, cakes and things in between. You are going on a daily basis. My arms really stunyard by the end of that baking class because I learned everything we were doing, we were doing by hand. I used to have arms, yo. I used to have arms. I don't anymore. So this mixture is um, softened butter, brown sugar, cinnamon, and almonds. You can use pecans if you want. Oh, 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 oh my God. You know what? It's fine. We'll figure this out as we go along. We forgot to put eggs. I was wondering why it was so thick. Okay, wait. Um, and you're not meant to beat the eggs this late into the mixture. So I'm going to have to beat it for a while. And then we turbo it. Oh, that thing has a kick. That thing has enough cinnamon to change your life. All right. Mm, that thing is tasty. My God. Okay. So I always taste the batter before I bake it because um, it kind of gives you an idea of what your cake is going to taste like. Remember, butter your tin or spray your tin with a cooking spray and then put the flour to prevent it from sticking. And then you put one layer Okay, and you spread it out onto this batter. You take your fork and you kind of swirl it around. So just for the sake of allowing it space to rise, I'm not gonna add the remaining batter. So I'm gonna pop this in for about um, 40 minutes. So um, usually when you wanna see whether your cake is done, you just dip a fork in, and if it comes out clean, your cake is good to go. So far, so good. Oh my God, you guys. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my gosh. Just like, I'm just excited. Super excited. All right, so remember in here, there was cream cheese, which has been um, coming to room temperature along with icing sugar, right? I want to add like just a single dash of vanilla to this. I'm so emotional before I forget. Okay, let me just mix this up and then I'm gonna use the mixer just now. As usual, please just start small. Like, don't get overexcited and just do your own things. What you working with? Don't stop. Okay, wait. Taste the cheese, quite vanilla -y. Taste the sugar, but from afar, which is great. You don't want it to be way too sweet because there's a lot happening here. I think we're good. The jam container. Was I praising this thing five seconds ago? Because I completely take that back. So there's golden syrup and there's almonds. You can also use maple syrup, works out great. And then what you can do is, let me do that. So first of all, I am very tempted to try it with the cream cheese. So I'm gonna do that. Um, mm. Oh my god. I think for once I might get high off my own supply. From my sticky fingers to my very overwhelmed system right now by just how fantastic this dessert happens to be. This is the overdressed cook. My name is Anita Nderu. You need to try this recipe. That's all I'm gonna say.